like it when it's natural. Uh, when you wake up and you just feel like uh, I'm hustling today. Uh, I feel like I can yeah. ride and do uh, anything in the world. Uh, Ain't nobody stop. Uh, so it was rip. Come on, palm tree. Uh, uh, to palm uh, tree. Uh, with so much uh, ambition. Uh, motivated by uh, currency. Come uh, on, palm tree. Uh, uh, to palm tree. Uh, uh, it was like a dream. Uh, 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 up early, feeling good, out the hood, on a mission. I ain't tripping, heavily focused, enjoying this West Coast living. Cali Breeze when it's... Hey, everybody, it's your grown woman on the move, Osiris, with 15 minutes to show. We are here in lovely downtown Santa Monica at Hair Design Studios, 1507 4th Street, Santa Monica, 90401. And I am here with my girl, visiting from Seattle via Paglia, Italy, Linda Antognini and her dirty brush designs with Project Tupac. So, hey girl, what's going on? Hi, thank you. Welcome um, for me to be here in uh, Santa Monica to share what Project Tupac is. My name is Linda Antonini, and I am an artist, and I paint my interpretation of Tupac's lyrical messages on canvas. Wow, so let's, can we hear about how, how did you a, now I wanna say this very sensitively, this is a white woman. How did you possibly get into Tupac? I mean, this is to so far away from where you've come from. How did you, and, and the good thing about Pac is that he does transcend color and class and creed, but how did you come to know Pac? Well, it, it was a story that started in 2011. We were actually living in Philadelphia um, on moving to relocating to Seattle. Um, days before we were putting the house on the market, our house caught on fire. And um, it took a pretty big hit. We were displaced from the house for a couple months. And it was through that, that, that moment in time that you have a shift when you have a, something like that happens, when you have a fire. Um, you're very vulnerable and your heart is in a place of gratitude and it's in a, gr a place of thankfulness. And humility, right? Oh, unbelievable. You just are thankful and feel blessed that you're, you're okay, the kids are okay, the cats and the dogs, everything else, it doesn't matter at that point. It truly doesn't matter. Um, so it was through that process of from the moment you have a fire, Everybody, strangers start coming into your house and they literally have to touch everything, either to be cleaned, thrown out, repaired, restored, something. So you have immediately from day one, however you left that house when you walked out, um, you're open, you're exposed. So it was through that process, the people that came into the home um, to help were unbelievable. They, they were so caring, like they were caring for their own grandmother's items. They, they took their time, they were respectful, and um, they were very patient, you know, because this, they, they do this all the time. So I play music. I'm a music lover. I love all kinds of genres. You're an artist. <laughs> I am, and um, so I always played music. I had an old garage radio, and it was kind of, you don't want to move it too much. I always played rock and roll. The guys would come out, and they would nudge it over to the hip-hop station. I would try to nudge it back, so we, this went back and forth for the time that we were there. And um, so I asked one of the guys, I said, who do you go to? Who do you listen to when you have times like this, when you have a tragedy? And he said, I listen to Tupac. That we listen to Pac. I listen to Tupac. Y'all. Yeah. And he said, go listen to Me Against the World. So, so I, he gave you a specific song to go listen to? Wow. I did. I put it on. And I... Well, how did, how did, did the song eventually come on their little radio you had? Or no, no, did no, you no, have no. the song with you? Or? No, I had to look it, you know, I looked it up, oh. put it on my little bows, oh. and, um, and we were all ready after the relocation. This is after everything was done now. We're, this is several months down the road. And um, I listened to it, and I, and I, I listened to it okay. again and again and again, and I heard the music. I looked up the lyrics and I felt like he was speaking to me um, with everything that I was going through. And um, so I told my friend, I said, it was really powerful. It was, you know, it was really impressive. He said, go listen to Brenda's Got a Baby. And here it is. Brenda's had a baby. And wow. when, um, when I played that, 
listening to how the music, the layers of the music, it was like every note, every word was speaking to me. You felt it. Oh, I felt it. My heart exploded. I, I cried. And that's the power of music, and especially with Pac's music. Everybody out there that's a Pac fan, you know what I'm talking about. He had a way of touching people from people that wouldn't even be interested in hip hop. I mean, conservative folk, you guys, that only listen to classical music or something. He was able to really um, very profoundly touch the lives of many, many people. So now after this happened to you, after this tragedy, and you began to pull your life back together, what happened for you to say, this is something that I think, this is something that I'm supposed to do, I'm being called here? Well, as I listened to um, Brenda's Got a Baby, I just randomly, now let me step back a minute, all through the 90s, from 94 to almost to the end of, of 99, I did not live in the United States, so I was not privy at all to the East Coast, West Coast, Tupac, Biggie, you know, all the rivalry, and I wasn't very familiar at all with Tupac, just a couple songs. Where were you? Where were you? I was over living in Italy. Okay. And uh, so I just randomly started just looking up Tupac's music and learning about Tupac. Um, I Then the next song I listened to was Dear Mama, and then it was Hail Mary, and there was just random songs. And the more I listened to, the more it, it was like he was speaking to me, and I know that may sound strange, but the images kept on coming as I was listening to the lyrics. And I kept on thinking to myself, well, these are the same issues, the same problems, the same concerns that we have today as he spoke about at that time 17 years ago. And I'm like, there's a story here. There's an image story here that's different than anything else. And so um, I've always been an artist. Um, I've always painted, and um, at, but at that moment, Osiris, I thought, I'm just a mom, I'm a woman, I, I'm an artist, what can I do, you know, how can I do this? Um, and I just put a canvas up one day. I put a canvas up, and I would listen to Dear Mama, probably at that time, well over four or five hundred times, just continuous. And um, this was Dear Mama, this was the first painting that I painted in the collection. And um, it's... It, it was significant to me because I was a single mom in the 70s and there was something and I had a son. So it's a representation of Tupac's mom and myself and we're both holding our sons. And the power of, you know, that's why it's the deep reds, the passionate colors because there's no greater, there's no greater emotion than a mother and child, you know. We are appreciated. Yeah, and he always made it a point to talk to people about their moms, which is really important. You know, because if people go through life and, yeah, you know, thanks, mom, or whatever, but when it really comes down to it and you have a tragedy or a situation, it's like the first thing you think about mom, dad, or some close person that's to you. So now after the process of you uh, deciding that you're going to take on this project, to, uh, Project Tupac, then... How have how has the project been received? I know you just got back. She just got back from Paglia, Italy, you guys. And if I could tell you, I felt that I was there with you. And so I know you were very well received, but how did the community over there embrace Project Tupac? Because we're talking a foreign country where Tupac wasn't even born, but some kind of way he's reached over there and touched those people. One of the things I learned, the more I learned about Tupac, was um, how he transcended cultures. And then art also transcends cultures, as well as music. So it's kind of um, in another country, in another language, um, you feel the music. You can see the painting. And that's one of the things I incorporate. I, when you look at a painting, I want you to hear Tupac's music playing to that particular song that corresponds with the painting. So you can hear the music and feel it, how Tupac sang it, how the, the music was written, how the beats were laid out, how every musician, you can feel it, their intensity. But different than a video, you're looking at one image, your mind is focusing on that, that in particular, that one particular image, and it's a personal, it becomes now a personal experience. So it's the art and it's the music 
and it's not necessarily the language that is the barrier. Um, it opens up. Well, music transcends, art transcends, people transcend depending on who they are. So we're back to Project Tupac and Tupac Shakur. And I love, we were talking about that earlier, how he would sing and he would, it was just the way he would put that, gonna make you, you know, and it'd be in, in the, he would skip like some kind of way and people were like, wow, you know, just like he was almost floating on top and his spirit mm -hmm. would just be over the top. So I can imagine that you and your interpretations are really right on the money with him. Now, I know that you got to visit Atlanta and I know you got to meet actually the people that were the, uh, the people that were the founders of the Project Tupac Foundation in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So tell us just a little bit about that experience. I know that well, you that, loved it. <laughs> that was the amazing part. Um, after I had painted 10 paintings, I'm like, well, now what? Now what am I going to do? And I was still questioning myself, like, why is this white woman listening to Tupac's music, painting my images and interpretation of his music? Why? And I kept on questioning myself. Um, and I didn't know where to look, but I then at that time in 2012, um, I had just called the, the Tupac Foundation in Atlanta, Georgia, the one that was um, um, El Fenny, his foundation. Um, and he, where, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, okay. Um, it was. I just called them up and explained who I was, and they were like, nobody has ever done this and, before. And the way they embraced you. Oh, they, they invited me to go to Atlanta. They invited me there. I brought a copy of Dear Mama. I shared with them how I got involved and what happened. And, and from there, the, um, the overwhelming um, two thumbs up from the family and from the, the foundation with Vern Cambridge was I couldn't have asked for anything. It was just as I continued moving forward with Project Tupac, another door opened and another door, and they didn't want to stop me. I corresponded with Tupac's mother all the way through and let her know what I was doing. Every step of the way, I had that respect for, for her, and, um, and I continued, you know, the, the, I continued all the way until she had passed away, and I was actually living in Italy when that, when that happened. Um, so I've just continued. Now I am on the 23rd painting in the wow. Project Tupac collection. She got some Pacacity going on. <laughs> That's great news. Listen, we know you got to go and I got to go because you know we only 15 minutes and we like to do it live. But we need to know where we can find out more about Project Tupac. We need to know where we can find out more about you and your dirty brush designs. Let it rip. Well, you can find me on uh, Linda Antonini, and I'll spell my name, Linda, L-I-N-D-A, Antonini, A-N-T-O-G-N-I-N-I, dot com is my website. I have uh, Project Tupac on there, and I'm on all the social, me social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, okay. and you can find me there. All right, so we want to thank Linda for coming out. Before we leave, we are having an event here tonight for those of you that are local and you want to stop by. Started at 5, 5.30, and we expect a lot of people to be coming. Some people are here now. We want to talk to the owner of Hair Design Studio because she's been so wonderful to in have us invite us here and have Project Tupac hosted in her salon here in Santa Monica. So we can get Fahimi Betts to come up here really quickly and get, um, get her on camera. Uh, we're trying to find her back there. She's busy. Uh, if we can get her up here. Uh, Linda, can we get yeah. Fahimi in your seat? Thank you, Osiris. Say bye. Bye. bye Say bye. Ciao. We're going to get Fahimi here, you guys, but come out and really meet Linda. She's amazing. Every time I talk to her, I'm just in tears. You have no idea. It's a very emotional experience. I adore her. Okay? Thank you. Osiris. All right. Ciao. Okay, Fahime, can we get you up here, please? Hey, everybody. This is Fahime Betts. She is the owner of Hair, Design, Hair Designers Studio here in Santa Monica at 1507 4th Street. And Broadway is the cross street, or directly across from the 3rd Street Promenade. In Santa Monica. Hi, my hey. name is Fahime Betts. I have this salon for 31 years. And uh, welcome to come and visit us. 
uh, every day we are open and um, we love to see you here. She takes things by appointment, you guys. She has a beautiful salon. You'll see some of it when we are going around talking to people as they come in. Don't forget the event tonight is from 5 to 7 p.m. at Hair Designer Studio, 1507 Fourth Street and Broadway, lovely Santa Monica, California, 90401. Okay, for you guys out there and you ladies, do please come out, support Project Tupac, support Hair Designer Studio in the local area, and support Linda Antonini and her dirty brush designs. We'll talk to you later, okay? Bye, bye. say bye. 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 All right. I like it when it's natural, uh, when you wake up and you just feel like, uh, I'm hustling today, I feel like I can ride and do anything in the world, ain't nobody stopping, it was written, uh, 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 with so much ambition, motivated by currency, uh, uh, success, to bomb tree, uh, it was like a dream, uh, uh, up early, feeling good, out the hood, on a mission, I ain't tripping, heavily focused, enjoying this West Coast living, Cali breeze, winter time, 80 degrees, sunshine, mono cheese, got hustle, money ain't hard, to find. Come follow me as I take you through sickness through life. Getting strife, ripping mics, a double edged knife. Smashing dollar bread, passing some haters. Sell ring and talk, paper food, stepping, holler, later. Sell 